Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we have an interesting reaction to one of our buddies, Brian Stafford from oh, Lake Hickory Scuba. Such a good guy. Yep. Um, you know, I, I out of all the YouTube channels that talk about diving, there are a lot of channels that focus on lessons and they, they want to teach you things, you know, how to properly do things or whatever. But rarely you see channels that, like us, like to show our mistakes. Like, let's just talk about mistake I made and let's see. I know you're going to judge us. I know you're going to slam us, tell us that we don't belong or whatever. But we believe the benefit of going through that outweighs the cons. And Brian is one of those channels like us who doesn't mind. Let me show you where I messed up so we can learn from it. And this awesome. is one of those videos. Cool. Let's take a look. Okay. Hey, guys. It's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina. I'm fixing to show you a video that I'm not very proud of. Now, it's awesome. very difficult for me to show you this video because as a diving professional, I feel that I hold a certain level of credibility that I must maintain because diving is my livelihood. I feel that as a dive instructor, I am a role model. Now, let me give you a quick background of who I am, the diving experience I have, and I'll give you some background to the video you're about to watch. I've been diving for over 28 years. I have a little over 5,000 dives under my belt. I'm a dive instructor for five different training organizations. I hold a course director title and two uh, instructor trainer titles for two of those five agencies. I'm a master instructor for another one, and I'm also a master scuba diver trainer for the last. I dive in all types of environment. Every March I go up north and I do ice diving. I take students up and teach them in overhead environments no. and ice diving certifications. I'm also a public safety diver and a public safety diving instructor. I teach students how to deal with blacked out conditions, how on a working dive, how to remain calm, relax. I also am a salvage company owner, meaning mm -hmm. my company does underwater salvage. We get boats, cars, airplanes, you name it, out of the lake. Yep. Which I helped him raise a boat. Yep. You may remember well, that. Well, so you can later on. I, I th he said I helped a lot. So I'm constantly on working dives. Being in blacked out overhead environments is not something that's new to me. However, the environments that I dive in, I'm very used to and I have a lot of experiment in or experience in. Anytime I dive, dive a new location, I try to get as much information as possible about the dive site. This is important. I'll look the site up on Google Maps, I'll look for underwater maps, or I'll check with my, the local divers of that area to see what they can tell me about the dive site. I do my sure. very best to make sure I'm adequately prepared with redundant air systems or redundant scuba equipment. Also make sure I'm adequately repaired with enough air to do this particular dive. Now the dive that you're about to watch is from Troy Springs of our recent dive trip down to the Florida Springs. It was the last trip or last dive of this trip. Three of us decided to make the dive. Now from the get go, we had many flaws among us. This whole dive trip, I'd been diving with a steel 100 with a backup 30 cubic foot pony tank. On this particular dive, I went with an aluminum 63. <laughs> Another diver that was with us had been diving steel 100 doubles the whole trip and decided to go with a steel aluminum 80. The last diver wow. was in steel 100s as he Why? had been for the entire length of the trip, but they were only half full. He oh. was using the steel Damn. 100s as a single tank. So we were flawed from the very get-go. We did a very thorough briefing between the three of us. We did our pre-dive safety check and we proceeded with the dive. At a depth of 20 feet, we stopped to review some skills. At a depth of 30 feet, we encountered blacked out conditions. Now, once again, this is something I'm used to, I'm comfortable in. The other two divers were not. Hmm. We decided to end the dive. However, when we signaled to each other, we had lost one of our buddies. Myself and the other diver, that, diver decided to do feeling. a lost buddy procedure where you search for a minute and come to the surface. During this lost buddy procedure, we ended up losing each other. Mm. I also swam into a restriction. I'd went into a cave system unknowingly, simply due to the blacked out conditions, wow. I could not see where I was going. That's when I finally made the decision to surface to hopefully find my buddies at the surface, I found myself inside of a cave or even a cavern, if you will, in an overhead environment, and I was stuck on at least three sides. Was he on the lot? Oh. I really did not know how to get out of this so environment. So no line. No line. I started Oof. to hyperventilate. I started to become overly stressed. Wow, Brian. I resorted back to my training. 
I chose not to panic. Good. Now, what you're going to hear in the video is my breathing increase. You're going to hear these long, deep inhales and exhales. And you're going to hear it go into a hyperventilation. <clears throat> but I was simply resorted back to my training to get me out of this environment. I'd be a liar if I told you I was not spooked, extremely spooked, or if not downright scared For during sure. this dive. The overhead environment didn't scare me. The blacked out conditions didn't scare me. But being in a new dive site that I had absolutely no information on other than depth, I was scared. I was also in aluminum 63. Wow. I kept trying to calculate my saccharate, or my saccharate in my head to determine whether or not I had enough air even to make it out of this restriction, even to make it to the surface. Yeah. Now I'm here shooting this video for you so you know I made it out. But I want you to see what I experienced. Am I afraid that this video is going to jeopardize my credibility? Absolutely. But I feel more obligated as a mm -hmm. diving professional to show you cool. that even us as dive professionals sometimes get ourselves in situations we shouldn't be in. Thanks, man. And no matter our training and no matter our experience, sometimes bad things happen. And I hope you learn from this video. Trust me, I know I have. Now, has this stopped me from overhead environment diving? No. Has it stopped me from diving in blacked out conditions? No. But it has made me more safe and conscious as a diver? Absolutely. As a dive instructor, I really hope you learn from this the same way I did. So pay close attention to this video, and I appreciate you watching. It's tough, man. For those of you watching who are not familiar with cubic feet and the way we label tanks, aluminum 80 is the standard scuba tank that most scuba divers use. I don't know how many liters that is, but it's a standard scuba tank, aluminum 80. Aluminum 63 is 63 cubic feet instead of 80, so it's smaller. It's like a fourth almost smaller than a regular tank. So that's why he was talking about, I have a small tank, I don't know if I'm going to be able to even make it out. And this is terrible. I mean, visibility. it's already bad vis. There's no vis. Yeah. Mm, that's pretty bad. It, are they online? Did they bring a line down? Nope. No line. So that that that's that's a no go right there. When you have this kind of vis in a cavern, well, they're not in a cavern. This is open water, and the the vis is this bad. That's not even in a cavern at this point. They're not yet. No, he's gonna he's gonna go into it looking for his body. Mm. S drill. That's what that means when yep. he was doing that. Yep. Safety drill. Testing Good everything. Job. Notice they're doing it at what appears to be in good trim. But, um... By the way, it's super important for rebreather divers to put their head underwater and breathe from the necklace regulator. Because yep. you can breathe from it on the surface and think it's fine, but it can be flooded where the val the mushroom valve is like stuck inside of it or the, the diaphragm is stuck. I did that in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I went under and touched it. Just a whole glop of water and came right back up and realized, oh, I got to unscrew it and fix it. You got to breathe off those regs, not on the surface. That's not testing them. Yeah. In the water, under the water. And again, this is a good reminder of the rules that we follow as rebreather divers, which I mentioned in the last episode, never start to dive with a known issue. These guys had three issues and they decided to go diving anyway. And the, vi the viz at that point, I would have a line all the way to the surface. That's no viz at all. This is terrible. I don't yeah. even know. How, I mean, you could tell you're descending, and that's about it. Right. Wow, that's terrible. But this is, you know, this is also for, for the people leaving comments like, why can't you just follow your silt out? Like, if you silt it out of the cave, just follow the mm. silt out. Really? Look at this. You can't see anything. I mean, look at the top right. You see how it's like blackness? That's how thick the silt can get in places. Yeah. It looks totally black. Look at that on the right side. I've been in that before. It's black. It's dark. Like, I can't see anything. Look at that. That's how thick it can be. Yeah. I mean, honestly, without touch contact on your buddy in this situation, you could lose them in a second. You gotta lose them, yeah. 
Look at that. Pure blackness. Wow. <laughs> That's how, I mean, it happens. We've, you, we've been in that situation together, going to For sure. Woody's room. Remember that? Oh. Where you're just, but it's 100% black. How comforting is it to have your hand on the line at that oh point? Oh, my God. Knowing that this goes to the that exit. exits. There's no other way you would know. Yeah. He's still calm. You can hear the breathing just... He hasn't realized he's in an overhead. Mm. Boy, if you ever needed to be online, this is that situation. I thought his opening speech was really good. Yeah. So humble and... Here we go. He hits the ceiling. Uh-oh. Man, when you hit that ceiling, uh-oh. And you're expecting it to be open water? He looks like he's turning in circles, too. He just doesn't know where to do go. Do I go that way? Do I go that way? I mean, it's silted out everywhere. Where do you go? Look at that. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Look, he's on the wall. It's like, okay. Here's the wall. No line there. It's just it's like a random whatever. Braille. Just following, trying to find the hole. Could take you deeper, though. It could take you more into it easily. You don't know what direction you're going. This is a great video to show how disorienting it can be. Yeah. And quickly. Yeah, like at least if you did this and you were in a rebreather, you had hours to figure this out. I'll be like, okay, well, I don't know where the exit is, but I have three hours to figure this out. Four hours, five hours, whatever. But Brian is not on a rebreather. He's actually in a small tank. I wonder if this is his first time experience, experiencing I'm lost. For sure I'm lost, and I don't have a lot of air. Yeah, I think so. This. And it may seem like it's an exit, like light coming through, but that's his flashlight. He's completely dark. There's no light from the outside coming in. No, it's just going to be, it's, it's luck that he got out. Yeah, and you can see he's panicking here. He's yeah. going super fast. Like, where's the exit? This where's the exit? breathing. Where's You're right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, man. Everywhere you go is bang, bang, ceiling, ceiling. Nobody else with him. Everybody's. God, oh, man, this is rough. Terrible. Yeah. Ah, oh, looks like he may have. No, it looked like a like he may have found the opening there. It looks like the bottom. I don't know. It's a complete mess. Yeah, nothing. It's just wall, 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 wall. And he's just looking on the wall. Like, where's the hole? Where's the exit? I wonder what made him continue right from oh. the very beginning without a line. He found it. Look. He found it. But what do you think made him... From the very start, that's, I always like to go back to right when the mistake is happening. Yeah. Why would you not run a line? I wonder what his mind was right at the point the second you put your head underwater and saw nothing. Why? Uh, probably they were like, we're just going to go down, do our thing, and come up. We're not going to go into the cave. We're not going to go anywhere. Let's not run lines. That would be something that I'm sure he will not do again. Right. Because it's it's a lot of work to run line, but safety. 
Oh man, I bet right here he is just breathing a trying to calm down. Major sign of relief. Sigh of relief. Mm. Brian, that's scary, man. Yeah. Wow, I wonder what he did to ultimately get out and not just keep spinning in circle. Maybe circle and then move a little further circle. That's what it looked like. He was just moving around circling. I don't know, but... Mm. He made it and, out. You know, I, it is helpful, Brian, that you did this. Like, you know what? It's, it's making me remember if you stick your head in the water and you cannot see, I'm run we're running a line because you may end up anywhere. Yep. Just take the time, run the line. Especially if you're in a place that has a cave or a cavern <laughs> that you can, by mistake, go into. Oh, run. man. Got to run the line. Run line for sure. And, of course, we've mentioned in the past that running line is not as easy as it seems. Brian is a cavern instructor, so he, he teaches the SSI cavern stuff. So he knows how to run line. He, he should know how to run lines, but this is not for everyone, right? Is he a cave diver? No. Not, yeah. uh, not until the last time I talked to him. Maybe he is now, but I wish. I told him, he's like, dude, get cave certified so we can go dive. But um, he's a cavern instructor, and, and again, he has several videos where he's running line and he knows what he's doing. It's just on this one, I don't think he expected to go into the cave area. So he's just, I think, on the safety stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, I think it's natural lighting at this point. Yeah. So he's out, but I mean, that was brutal, Brian. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm appreciative. I mean, I think it's really admirable. He's a really good guy, by the way. Yeah. And, you know, we've done other stuff with him. He's extremely humble. So it's not just in this video that he's like that. He's like that always. But um, I'm just glad you're okay, man. That that was that could have that could have gone really bad. And I'm glad that our channels out there willing to. Look, I know that this is going to make me look bad. I know that people may think less of me. I know, that, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's the right thing to do, right? Um, I wish that was more the norm. And I see the comments that people leave in our videos being like, thank you guys for not editing your dives and yeah. showing people that you make mistakes. Of course. Why are we going to do like other channels and pretend we're perfect? We're not. We're not perfect. We're not. Openly, we accept that. Um, so I'm glad that he did that. It's something that we extremely support. Um, yeah. and yeah, I'm glad he learned. You learned the hard way, but he's never going to forget that. I, I don't have met much else to say. I just, you know, I, something else. I'm he, glad he put it out there. I agree with you on the complete opposite of the spectrum. Something he already forgot was the time you helped them. Luckily I was there. Get this boat out of the water. I and, and I did do a thorough briefing at the start of this one that I think they found helpful. In case you haven't caught the mayhem on that video, I'm going to leave it right here. Check it out. Comment. Like it. Buy merch. Let me lift your boat. No. do not. I'm saying if you need an extra lift, I, I just want to throw that out there. <laughs>